What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and yesterday Amazon Game Studios and Smilegate RPG put out a message around the lack of honing materials, the fact that they rushed Argos into the game, and that they just simply prioritized the wrong things. So what did they say and how are they going to fix it? Because guys, we have some free stuff coming and we need to talk about it. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. So this post starts off with an acknowledgement that they have been learning things as players have submitted feedback and that they want to be as transparent as possible around planning and what their mindset was towards the content roadmap, progression, and Argos. Now, they reiterated that in other versions of the game, players were stuck in Tier 1 and Tier 2 for a very long time before Tier 3 was actually added to the game. Now, as you all know, this was not the case for Western release. Instead, we received portions of Tier 3 right at the start. And because of this, there was kind of a few misunderstandings around what purpose Tier 1 and Tier 2 actually served. So, they went into that. They stated that Tier 1 and Tier 2 were supposed to be an introduction to endgame systems in Lost Ark, and that these served more as a, like, mid-game prologue for the wealth of endgame Tier 3 content. So essentially, leveling up was Tutorial Part 1, and then Tier 1 and 2 were Tutorial Part 2 to help you understand the overall gameplay loop, and then Tier 3 is where you actually apply all of that knowledge to start your grind. Now, they also stated that they decided to add some of those Tier 3 pieces at launch based on beta and alpha feedback. So originally, and we both know this, this was something that was not going to be in the game at launch. They really wanted to focus on 1 and 2, but because of the feedback they received during those test sessions, they added some pieces of Tier 3 to give people a few more things to do at launch. Now, this whole thing is a little bit concerning because there's so many folks that are still stuck in Tier 2 because they have a lack of materials to push them beyond this tier. And if you check out forums or watch a couple videos online from other creators, you're going to start to see people talk about a few things that are missing from our version of the game that would have made the overall process a little bit easier for us. For instance, being able to have alts skip the whole island chain and jump straight to where you are to help funnel those resources, for example. And they get into that whole monster later in the post, how they plan to address honing materials and all of that fun stuff. So we'll get into that. But you can see that there's two things here. Either they might have intentionally left things out to lengthen the horizontal progression to then encourage people to spend money, which is kind of the running uh, idea right now, or that they made a big misstep and didn't account for streaks of bad luck, wasting materials, or all of the bots that are in the game. And speaking of bots, they really kind of reiterated that they're maintaining a very hard stance on these things. We'll talk about that in a second, but I want to move on to Argos. So from a player perspective, this edition felt very clunky and it felt too soon. I mean, it's content that lots of folks are still unable to do even to this day. So what exactly happened? Why did they decide to add content that a very small percentage of the population could actually do? So the intent here was to have Argos added as a stepping stone to help bridge the gap to new endgame activities coming at a later point. Unfortunately, this whole thing arrived with the thought that the game was leaning more into like pay to win, since most people didn't have the materials, the time, the gold, or even the ability to reach 1370 to actually do Argos. I mean, you were watching a bunch of streamers and content creators literally pour every ounce of what they had into their character just to reach 1370 a few days or maybe even a week after Argos arrived. So if you see somebody who plays this game for 14, 15 hours a day and they're struggling to hit 1370, you automatically assume that you will not be able to get there. And it's just going to be this huge wall that you're gonna to have to overcome and it's just not a good look for the game. And really what it does is it looks like you have to go into the cash shop because there's materials out there you can purchase and you could supplement your inventory and shorten your overall journey. And this sort of became the narrative that you had to go into the cash shop in order to do Argos. And a lot of people started quitting and they said the game is truly pay to win and pay to progress. And that's not something that they want to play. So Amazon Game Studios and Smilegate came out and said, hey, this isn't the case. We just wanted to give people something to shoot for and work towards at their own pace. But they did ultimately acknowledge that it was released way too soon, entirely too soon. Because again, a small percentage of the population could actually do it. Now they went into why they decided to release Argos this early. So AGS and Smilegate added that they had this data from previous launches showing that more players should have been by 1370 at this point, 
which means the Western release is falling behind other releases in terms of progressing through the game and kind of pushing your item level. But one thing that they talked about is that they overlooked certain variables. Players in the Western version have been wanting to spend more time on horizontal content like island tokens, collectibles, leveling up your alts, and not spending every single moment grinding out materials trying to push your main account higher. And this is where they admitted that those bots and those real money transactions have hurt the economy and also drove the prices of materials so high that players can't easily purchase what they need from the auction house. And again, they maintained they're still very committed to banning as many of these accounts as they can, but just like in other MMOs, it's one of those situations where you ban one account and three more appear. So it's a losing battle. The best you can do in this situation is just try to keep things under control. They're doing their best, but we'll see if they implement any other methods to kind of help battle that population of bots. So using Argos as a lesson learned, they're going to be halting the addition of Legion raids and further tier three content until the player base has caught up and really they're ready to take that next step. Now, this is not going to affect other new additions like adding new classes, new islands, or even adding the continent of South Vern. They're still going to be implemented as planned, but the actual activities will be monitored much more closely to avoid this whole situation in the future. And this kind of goes into a conversation I was having with a friend of mine. So we feel like the addition of tier three stretched the population too thin, which essentially created this almost siloed experience for players. Um, you're playing by yourself for the most part until there's an event that pops up that you kind of just gather around and then do by yourself, or you're in a party for five seconds to do it and then you leave the party. And you're kind of doing this until you reach tier three and have to actually start partying up. For instance, you can't matchmake for Argos because there's not enough people to do Argos, so you have to talk to other folks. And I think if they had stuck with Tier 1 and Tier 2 and just capped it there, more players would be piled up and it would feel more like an MMO and more like an online experience. So I am glad that they're pushing the pause button on new content. I feel like we just, we have so much stuff to do right now and we need to get this player base a little bit more consolidated. That way there's more opportunities and availability for people to party up and actually complete some of this end game stuff that they've been eyeing for a long time. And also just to touch on the whole new classes and skins being added to the game, they did confirm that these will be releasing faster than they did in Korea. So keep an eye out for those in the coming months. Now let's move into the main thing that most of you wanna know more about and that's honing materials, right? Upgrading your gear. So just to cut to the chase, we will be receiving increased honing rewards from the Grand Prix, and they will have a new Guardian Raid event that'll give lots of materials as well. So this event is described as a very casual version of Guardian Raids, and that these will scale to the player's level and the amount of players in the group. Now, they didn't spoil too much or expand on this, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a guess. This is gonna be an event where you can't lose. You can respawn as many times as you want in order to finish it, and then once you do, you're going to earn a currency to then spend at a reward vendor for materials. So we have another thing that we can leverage to help us progress through end game. Now, I'm all for events. If they don't want to actually buff the materials you get from static chaos dungeons, from guardian raids, from all of these sources you can access at any point in time, that's fine. But if they continue to have these events that are a month long, so Grand Prix is going to be here for a month, the uh, guardian event is going to be here for a month. If they want to continue doing those as a supplemental way to get materials, I'm all for it. It's going to give us something different to do, and it's something that you can log in, do once a day, so you don't feel like you have a huge time burden. So bring those on. I'll take those every single day of the week. Okay, so wrapping up the article, they mentioned that we will be receiving a gift pack next week. Now, this gift pack is going to include an animal skin chest, a MokoCon pet chest, a Moko board uh, mount, the Lost Ark United structure for your stronghold, an appearance change ticket, 132 Fions, five Menelix tomes, two legendary pack chests, and some jukebox songs once those arrive when the jukebox content was released in the future. Now the jukebox was just added in Korea. I mean, just added. So I'm not entirely sure when we're going to see this, but it is some future content that we'll be able to access. So for those of you who like jukebox, like music and the soundtrack to the game, you'll be able to have a couple extra songs to play in your stronghold. So overall, guys, I think this is the type of communication that I want to see monthly from them. A really deep look at things affecting the game, confirming that they and the players are on the same wavelength. I think if we can get these, 
then it would help both us as players and them as developers course correct when needed and avoid some of these miscommunications that we've seen in the past. So I want to hear from everyone. What do you guys think of the upcoming changes, the pause on tier three content, the gift pack? Let me know in the comment section below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. This has been Vulcan and I will talk to you next time.